hopefully, Mike, you can hear the audio now. Um, I think it may have been when your message was on, I was possibly on mute. Of course, the most common thing at the moment on these online meetings, everyone starts talking and realises they're on mute. Great. You can hear it now. Okay. Okay, hopefully most people have joined now, so we'll get started I know everyone's time's valuable and everyone's busy at the moment. Um, welcome to our webinar today. We're going to talk about um, Oracle Strategic Workforce Planning today. Um, I'm Jonathan Tolbert. I work for Namos Solutions. I'm the Enterprise Performance Lead, so my piece of Oracle's software portfolio is essentially things like planning and budgeting, financial consolidation, strategic workforce planning, sales planning. So a lot of my stuff is looking into the future, um, planning for future events, planning for the future of your organizations. So it's and then it's reporting, it's it's all looking at the future, it's less transactional than your main finance and HR systems. We sit on top of those systems and we actually look at the future, look at the balances, look at the big data within the organisation. So, as I said, I'm Jonathan Talbot. I'm the EPM lead for NAMOS. Um, I run our EPM practice. Um, got a team of people working for me. Um, we implement all the enterprise performance management software, um, including strategic workforce planning, which we're implementing with a couple of clients at the moment. Um, some of you may know us, some of you may not know us, so I'll just run through an introduction of who NAMOS are. So, NAMOS Solutions, we are an Oracle-only consultancy. That's all we do. We just do Oracle. We don't do any other vendors' products. Um, founded in 2012 by Chris Mason, our CEO. Um, we focus on Oracle ERP, so that's finance system, HGM, the HR systems, and also enterprise performance management cloud. We also do some technology stuff, some database stuff as well, but those three are our main specializations. Um, we're an award-winning Oracle partner, and we were one of the first of a new Oracle partner certification pro program which I've just introduced and we are still one of the only cert new certified partners in the UK. Um, we work very closely with Oracle. We've got lots of different customers over lots of different industries. We do a lot in higher education. We do a lot in public sector. With police forces. We do a lot of stuff with commercial organisations. We don't We'll work with any organisation. Essentially, we've got a good breadth across all of that. Um, we're passionate about delivering our expectations, earning a client's trust and building long-term relationships. So we like to work in partnership with people. Most of our clients have been with us for a number of years. We're bringing new clients on all the time. Um, and we like to work in partnerships. So when we do projects, we don't like to be a them and us approach. It's one team. So the projects we're working on, we've got the clients involved in very closely because you've got to take these systems over and work with them after we finish the project. 
So we need to build your skills. The closer the client works with during the project, the more successful we find it. Um, we are all UK-based staff, um, with one exception. We've just opened an office in the US, so starting to take US staff on, but everyone else is UK-based. Um, we don't use any offshore for development. It's all done onshore, and everyone who does that development is all employed directly by us in the UK. We don't use contractors. You know, we like to ensure you've got consistency of resources across the project. So, you know, for instance, if you work with us on a project for strategic workforce planning, you'd beat me. I'd be leading the project for you as a EPM lead. And we keep that consistency throughout the project, make sure you've got the same resources. So you're used to people and used to who you're working with. Um, we've got lots of Oracle experience, so everyone's certified. We've got lots of experience. I've been doing this for 19 years. I've been working with Enterprise Performance Management Software. This is before it was called Enterprise Performance Management Software. They've renamed it over the years. Um, and, you know, lots of other people in the organization, you know, a 10, 15, 20 years experience with Oracle. You know, it's what our careers is, it's what we work with. So, got lots of experience, we know what to do with software, we know what's successful, we know how to work with clients. Got a very good relationship with Oracle, we work with them at all levels, speak to Oracle constantly. Um, I was literally on the phone to someone at Oracle five minutes before this meeting, discussing a new project. Um, we also use Oracle ourselves, so we don't just implement it for you. We run all our business on it. So we've got the Oracle Finance System, the Oracle ERP. We've got the Oracle HCM. When I enter my holidays, I go and enter an Oracle HCM. When we recruit people, I go into Oracle Recruitment Cloud and I request a new person. We've got the Enterprise Performance Management. We do our planning and budgeting on it. We do our financial consolidation. We haven't got strategic workforce planning yet. Probably something we'll look at in the future. As we grow as an organization, it will be something we start to use because the features of it are very useful. It looks at skill sets of people. And so skill sets are hugely important to us. We've got consultants with technical skills, so we need to make sure they're up to date at the right level. Quick part about our mission and values. Um, we intend to become the most experienced management consultancy in the UK for Oracle. Um, our key values are professionalism, our expertise and our trust. And our mission statement is big enough to deliver, small enough to care. We've got 80 plus Oracle consultants in the UK at the moment, um, which, as I said, all employed, no contractors. So actually we're small in the big SIs, but we've got probably more Oracle consultants actually employed by us than a lot of them, and we're growing all the time. So moving on to a product a bit you're all here for. So what is strategic workforce planning? So it's a tool to centralize and get this information online. A lot of organizations will do strategic workforce planning at the moment, but a lot of people don't do it in a very formalized way. They might do it on spreadsheets, Word documents, collating information together from various HR systems, learning and development systems, talent systems to pull all this information together. So what this tool does is acts as a central repository, pulls all that information together from those HR systems, learning, talent and development, puts it all in the same place, makes it accessible to anyone who has the correct access to the system to view this data. So it's, you know, it's HR data, it's got to be secure, it's important, it's about people, and you know, you've got to make sure that that information is kept secure. So 
keep it in a nice central system rather than on a spreadsheet stored on a server somewhere. Keeps it more secure and also it helps people who need to access that information access it easily and get that one source of the truth. So the tools aimed at the HR department. So there's also some finance stuff in it. At the end, we say, how many people have you got? How much of those people go cost? So there is an element for finance. It can go into your budget saying how many FTEs you need, how many headcount, how much it's going to cost. But it's a mainly a tool for your finance department. As I said, it links into those other HR systems. So it doesn't matter if you've got Oracle HCM Cloud. Obviously, if you've got Oracle HCM Cloud, that's the perfect tool to link into it because Oracle designed it to work with their own product. But if you've got an Oracle on-premise system, you've got EBS. You know, if you've got another HR system, I don't know, you've got Workday or something like that, you've got an SAP system, we can integrate with that. We can pull data in from that system or any talent systems you've got, any one of the development systems you've got, we can quite easily pull that data in. So it's not just if you're an existing Oracle customer, it's not just if you're a cloud customer, this might be your first cloud product you want to look at. So we can still work with those on-premise legacy systems and that won't be an issue. As I said before, it replaces spreadsheet processes you know, so much business is done on spreadsheets, it's quite scary. You know, I think all organisations, you know, would be quite scared of it if they looked how much of a business actually runs on spreadsheets. It's a lot better to have a centralised system, which is more accessible. Like I say, it's that one version of the truth. It's not just sat there on someone's PC. Everyone can access the same data. So what we do in strategic workforce planning we start off by importing the data from your HR system. So we import what is the current state of my workforce, who works for me, how many people have I got, what are their names, employee IDs, etc. We pull out the skill sets, any attributes for employees, things like age, the employee, because you may want to work out your attrition by age. Um, any other characteristics you may want to do. We can also do things like wage gap analysis if you need to in the system, move it out to do things like that. Um, once we've got all that data, what we then do is we start to plan for the future. We look at what the state of our current workforce is going to be. Are we expanding? Do we need more skill sets? Do we need more people? Are we moving into different areas? So we need completely new skills which didn't exist in the company previously. We could plan for all that. Or alternatively, obviously, in the current environment, unfortunately, some organisations are having to make cuts. So, you know, how do you choose how to make those cuts? Because it's no just it's no good just saying we need to reduce our Workforce costs by 10%, you need to look at those people you need to retain. You don't want to get rid of the people who have the key skills which run your organisation, which make your organisation successful. So a tool like this can help with that as well. So it looks at what skills we need. You know, What skills do we need in the future? Is the organisation changing? How many people do we need to recruit? So we may have quite high attrition because of people retiring, because of people moving to new jobs. So we need to talk about attrition and what, what workforce we need to bring on in the future. It's also about investing in your current people. So you know, people are the most important resource for any organisation. So what can we do with those current employees to make them better? So how can we improve their skills? So what training courses do people need so as people move up through the organization do we need to give them more management training so when people move into management positions they can work better in management positions do we need new technical skills you know is technology changing our organization do we need people with new skill sets that we didn't have before finally what does the organization look like in five years five years is not 
a defined period you have to do. It's strategic, this workforce planning tool. You can go as far ahead into the future as you want. Some people might want to look 10 years into the future, 20 years into the future. Some people might only want to look three years because their organisation changes so frequently you can't plan five, ten years ahead. So the tool itself, it's a flexible platform. So a lot of organisations start out with just looking at one section of their workforce. They might not want to implement the whole tool for the whole organisation because you know, it's a big change for an organisation. There may be a particular part of the workforce which is more relevant to look at with this tool. Um, as I say on this slide, we're working with two police forces at the moment to implement this. So we're working through a project with them at the moment. They are looking at a moment to just put their officers onto the tool. They've obviously got lots of support staff as well, but officers in their organisation have very structured work paths, have very structured skill sets where their support staff is a lot more varied. You know, they have lots of different skill sets. So at the moment, they're just looking to implement it for their officers. So you can implement it all across the organisation or just part of it and then in future expand it out if that's what you want to do. It's quick to implement, typically less than two months for an organisation. <coughs> Excuse me, we can get this tool implemented. It's a very flexible tool. The way we implement it is quite an agile approach. What we'll do is we'll build it in stages and as we build each stage we'll pass it over to your SMEs, your subject matter experts involved in the project, to have a play with the tool, to learn the tool as we build. So when we get to the end of the build and we're doing the big demonstrations to a wider business, the people on the project have already seen the tool, so they, they know how it works and they know if anything we've built doesn't quite work for the organisation, so we can make changes and be agile as we work through our project. It's a centralised system, so it is. It will be the number one source of information and one source of truth about what your workforce is of the future. It forms the basis of your people budget as well, so once you've finished it, you may want to then involve the finance department and say, this is what we've planned for our business, this is how many people we need in our business next year, you know, we need to recruit another 30 HR people, we need to recruit 100 people to our call centre. Um, and then you have the usual conversation with finance where they usually say, no, you can't have that many. So go back and replan. So then you go back into the tool, replan how many people you're going to hire next year. So it's a good tool to help. I think that integration between the HR and finance departments, because I know sometimes when we work on projects, the HR and finance departments aren't always aligned with how they see the organisation and how they see the future. So I think a tool like this, with HR people on it, with finance people using it, with budget holders even using their tool, using this tool, you know, it increases that collaboration and it should hopefully speed up those budget processes. This sort of planning course it's very key in the current environment you know we're all in an environment in business in life at the moment which is completely unexpected um you know, it's nothing we've ever experienced before so there will be huge changes to organizations to businesses so you know planning for that future becomes more and more key you know we need to change our plans almost by the day sometimes. I know in April this year, a lot of organisations were saying, I've done a budget for my people, I've done a budget for my finance, and to be honest, it's now complete rubbish because of what's happened. I think what one guy I spoke to said, I'm just going to take my budget, say it away and throw it out the window because it's absolutely no use anymore because the whole world's changed and we need to change with it. Including the products as well, there's also reporting, so there's dashboards in it. We've also got 
something we call Smart View. It's a add-in for Microsoft Office. So everything I show you using the web interface today, you can also do the Microsoft Office interface because as I know, everyone loves Excel and they'll still want to use Excel as a tool going forward. So what I'll do is I'll run through a demonstration of the web interface, which is how the majority of people would use the product. And then I'll just show you a couple of ways of working in the SmartView Excel interface. So what you're all here for, I'm going to show you a demonstration of the product now. So it's a live demonstration. Hopefully everything will work. I always say everything always works until the moment you put it on a big screen or on a screen sharing tool, but I'm sure it'll all be fine. <laughs> So here is our front page. We see when we log on to the system. I'm logged in as Rich today. Richard's a user who don't, actually goes and then enters a strategic workforce plan. The tiles you see on the system here, it's all customizable. So depending on the user, they can see different tiles. Some users might only see one tile when you log on to the system because you want them to have a very guided path through building the strategic workforce plan. You don't want them to have access to other things. You know, the security is quite tight. If you're an administrator or a power user, you may see up to nine tiles on the screen. So you, you might have things like tools, which we've got here to go in and change the system, but it's all customizable. Um, we can have different colors on the screen. We can put your logos on. We can customize it to you. You can upload your photos. Um, it's all very customizable. So to start with just strategic workforce plan, I click on my strategic workforce tile. It comes up with the four different sections of the strategic workforce plan, which we're going to go through today. So we've got our overview. Our overview is looking at the existing HR data, which we've imported from our HR systems. We have that so we can review the HR data, make sure it's right, make sure the import that was loaded was the correct one. Then we've got our skills assessment. We look at people's skills that we've imported, look at what skills we need for the future. Then we look at our demand. So our demand as in new people joining, we also work out any attrition, etc. And then finally, we move on to our gap analysis, which is the difference between obviously who we've got, what our demand is, so whether we need to increase our recruitment or let people go and how we're going to fill those vacancies. So we'll start off with the overview. So we we'll start off with a dashboard. This shows me my current information. At the moment, I'm looking at our HR service desk. So our HR service desk is a department within our organization. It shows a HR one because I know we've got a HR audience here. So it's telling me at the moment in my organization, I've got in my HR service desk organization, I've got two full-time directors, four and a half business partners. This is all FTE. I've got three HR resources, generalists, et cetera, et cetera. It showed me what my current workforce looks like. Depending on my access rights, I can obviously look at different areas of the business and I can look at the complete organization. So Total HCM UK, is my total organization. So if I click OK, you'll then see I see numbers for the whole organization. I'll just switch back to our HR service desk because that's what we're going to look at today. So, so this tool could be sent out to budget holders. They could just have access to their particular budget that they hold. So in this case, this would be I'm head of the HR service desk. So I hold the budget for this. I look after all the people. So I would just have access to look at my particular cost center or department. 
I can review my employee information, which has come over from my HR system. So it's telling me who my directors are, Amanda and Ian. In fact, they're both regular employees, so employee type customizable. So in this case, regular employee just means normal employed by us directly. We've also got temporary employees in here. You may set your system up with contractors, fixed term employees, the employee types customizable. It shows me what percentage of an FTE they are. So most of mine are one FTE. We've got some people who work part-time, Warren and Rosa. We've also got their age in as well. As I said, we use age for things like attrition because the attrition profile obviously changes by age. We then import average compensation rates for our HR system. This demo system does it at an average. If you've got a particular structure in your organization for pay and pay grades, you know, everyone's on a particular pay pay grade, so you know, someone's a one one, grade one, band one, or grade eight, band fifteen. We can use those grade structures, but some organizations they just take an average value. <clears throat> it depends how accurate you want to go. If you want to go down to a penny, we would use your grades and bands. So in here we can also make any changes. So if I know in next year I'm going to change analysts pay to 2000 and then the year after, I'm going to change it to 2300. The year after, 22,500. I can make that change and apply it. I could also make comments on any cell of data that I change. We also keep any audit history so we can see who's changed it and why they've changed it. So if I wanted to put commentary on the cell, so I want to explain to people why have I increased the figure to 92,000 for FY20. I'm going to put a comment on. So pay increase due to union agreement. On that, I could also attach any files that I want to. So any file type, I can enter. Um, Word documents, Excel documents, PDFs, etc. So I can provide that evidence. And when people come into the system to review the numbers, they can see my commentary. They can see that I've attached a document and they can go in and open that document as long as they've got access rights to view that part, particular part of the system. Then go into my skills assessment. So here we're looking at what my current skills are at the moment. So in blue, I've got my current skills. So it's saying on average in my HR service desk, problem solving skills are an average of four. What I want those problem solving skills to be like by FY22, I want them to be an average of 4.8. So this tells us what we need to invest in as an organization in terms of training or people. So I want to increase my problem solving skills in the department by 4.8. So how do I do that? Do I run a training course? Do I recruit someone with better problem solving skills? You know, all these skills here are fully customizable to match the skills in your organization. At the moment, we're working with the police, so they've got skills. They've also got qualifications they've put in this. So, for instance, if you want to walk around with a machine gun and you're a policeman, you've got to pass the, the uh, not shooting people course, as I called it in the meeting the other day. I think someone said it's a firearm skills course. Important not to call it shooting people course, apparently. <laughs> so, they look in the future and they say, actually, because of knife and gun crime increasing, I need to increase my armed officers, so I need to run 50 armed skills courses next year so I can get another 100 armed officers available. So they look at how the demands changing for people with different skills, cyber crime is another big one for them, so 
traditionally police forces hired a lot of people with humanities degrees and at the moment we've got lots and lots of cyber crime so actually we're looking at saying we need to hire people with more technical degrees who really understand cyber crime and hacking and you know people breaking into your bank accounts and all that sort of stuff so we're looking at you know how it changes their recruitment how it changes the skill sets they need and how we can address those skill sets either through recruitment or of course training another graph here showing our average skills correlation from the different skills so all these dashboards are customizable we've got lots of different objects it displays very well we can import these dashboards into word documents etc so if you were building a business case you could import these dashboards which you built up through building your strategic workforce plan then look at skills by category so again categories are customizable we can create whatever categories you have for your skill sets so at the moment in my system i've got behavioral skills i've got managerial skills technical and average skills so these are all customizable it's showing me the different average ratings for my department for each of them We've got, as I showed, we've got lots of different objects. It's very graphical. It's very good to look at. We can then look at skills for an individual employee. So here we're looking at Amanda's skills. So I can look at Amanda and I say, I can set my skills for a whole department, but here I can set skills by an individual person. So I, Amanda is one well, of my directors at the moment her team work skills four but i need those to increase by to five by fy22 save that and it works out what my skills gap is at the moment then i can go in and edit any other individual employees so i can say alan's problem solving is currently a two I need it to be a 5 by FY22. Again, it calculates my skills gap. So then we know that Alan has a skill set gap of minus 3. So then we need to obviously provide some training or something else to increase his skills in that area to get it to where we need. Then look again at the individual employees and do some further work on what skills we want for that employee. We then move on to our demand. There we go. So what I'm saying here is it showed me a dashboard of what I need as I work through the future. So in FY18, I historically had 53.7 headcounts, 10.8 of which was an analyst. In FY19, it moved through and I have 58.1 FTE in my help desk, 12 of which were analysts, 13 of which were recruiters. And as you see, it shows the different FTE that we're planning for the future. So in FY20, 159.9, so I'm increasing it by 1.8. Then it's going to drop in FY21 before, oh, sorry, increase in FY21 and increase again into FY22. So how do I calculate my demand? So we've got different ways of doing it. So we've got demand drivers. So you can calculate different dr drivers. So one driver I'm using here is my regional employee count. So I'm saying for a certain number of regional employees, I need a certain number of HR service desk people because if I've got a certain number of employees, I can expect a certain number of calls, for instance, or my new hire count. So if my new hire count is increasing by year, then I probably need more recruitment staff on my HR service desk. So what we do here is we enter our expected numbers for 
our various drivers. So my regional employee count, I expect, we're going to be at 5,300 by FY20. Our number of calls will increase to 10,000. So that will then update our drivers. So here, we're calculating our different demand for different employee types in our HR service desk. So we're saying for an analyst, what we say is our assumption, which we've just added on the previous page, we will use regional employee counts. So then we have a demand rate. So we're saying for every 400 um, regional employees, I need one analyst. For directors, again, we're using regional employee counts. For HR resources business partners, we're saying our number of calls. So we're saying that our previous year's number of calls times by 10% equals the number of HR resources business partners I need. Um, for recruiters, as I said, we're using a new hire count. Obviously, as you see, you could change the driver you use to calculate this. All the drivers are customizable, so we can customize it to drivers that drive your business. So it may be that you're an organization selling products and you say, next year I'm going to sell 100 million pounds worth. And I know that for each million pounds worth of sales, I need one salesperson. So we say I want 100 million pounds worth of sales. That means I need 100 salespeople. So all these drivers, are customizable and you can flex them you can change the driver you use to calculate a different resource to create different versions of plan so you can create what if versions of your plan to see what if i increase my sales what if my organization starts doing this so we can create lots of different versions of his plan using this tool then we take it to the board we take it to the senior management and say this is what happens if we do this so if we open this new department next year, I need X number of new people. This is how much it'll cost. And we've got all these nice dashboards showing them the information. Then move on, we can do demand FTE. So this is our demand calculated from a previous page. It's saying that it's saying FY20, I need 13 analysts. So my driver is the same 13, but I look at this driver and I say, actually, no, 13 is too many. I know we can't afford that. So if I want to make a manual adjustment to it, I just enter a minus value. Or if I look at a HR resource, business partners, it says I need 4.6 next year. I actually think the drivers are not quite right. So I want to increase that by two headcount. I can put in a manual adjustment. So it's not just calculating the numbers using the drivers. You can manually adjust these figures that come out. Then move on to our demand compensation. And it shows me how much each resource is going to cost me. So my analysts are going to cost me a million pounds, 1.1 million next year. Then move on to supply because demand is wonderful, but we can't always get who we want. We can't always recruit full time employees. Sometimes we need to recruit temporary staff. We need to recruit people on fixed term contracts. We need to recruit contractors. We need to use consultants because sometimes people aren't available um, on the market or we just need people temporarily. So it shows me my supply summary by the different jobs. We then enter our attrition. So at the moment, I'm going to calculate attrition by job. You can also do attrition by age as well. Actually, I'm going to do attrition by age today. So I choose, I want to use attrition by age for my HR service desk. So what I can do is I can set my retirement age. So obviously in the UK, 63 is nowhere near enough because I think it's 67 at the moment, maybe. So we can add to our retirement age as it increases because the government's increasing over the years. I don't quite know 
what the ages are as we go forward because I'm in the forties, so it's what it's a stupidly long time away for me when I look at it. <laughs> so we change our retirement age by the years. We look at our attrition by age bands. So in quite a lot of organisations, we have attrition's change as people move through their career, move through their ages. You know, we might have high attrition when people are younger because they come in, start a job, decide they don't like it or decide to move on because they found something else. Um, we also get high attrition at the ends. So we can vary these attritions by how we think that's going to work out in the future. So if I want to increase my attrition for over the 66 to 70s to... To eight point one percent, etc. I can then rerun the calculations. It'll show me my attrition. As I said, we can also do attrition data by jobs as well. You can choose attrition data by age man or job. We can build it to do different types of attrition that you need to do. We then come to our supply. So it shows me what my supply is. What who I've got retiring, who I've got turn as turnover, so people who are leaving the organisation, people who are retiring. We then get to my supply headcount. So it shows my supply for the next few years. And then we look at our supply compensation. So how much it's going to cost me to recruit those extra people. Finally, we move on to our gap analysis. So we calculated our supply, we calculated the demand, and then we've got a difference between the two. Hopefully we haven't got a difference, the presence, but I, I think in most circumstances, most organisations will have a difference between the supply and demand. So we have various different graphs on our dashboard. Then we have some more de detailed Graphs, it's showing me my supply headcount, what the demand is, and what the variance between those two are. And finally, we get to the gap. So here we look at our gaps. So then we can put any adjustments. So if we're going to lay people off, make them retire, um, make them redundant, we can put that in. People who transfer in from different departments, People who transfer out to other departments. We can choose how we're going to hire those new people. So are we going to directly hire experienced people, take them from other organisations or businesses? Are we going to recruit from university? So we may have some different graduate recruitment schemes. We do a lot of graduate recruitment ourselves. So we have a few different gra graduate recruitment schemes. So in here, they've got university one and two. So there are two different university recruitment schemes. I'm going to say I'm going to get two people from that one and three people from the other. Then we can hire, we call it contingent labour in here. So contingent labour being temporary staff. I'm going to hire one from that. And then acquisition labour. So I know we're taking over someone. So actually I'm going to acquire two people from taking over those organizations. Once we've done all that, it updates the dashboards at the start. And then we have different summaries and different numbers of people in the organization. Um, as I said, I'll just show you quickly because I'm aware I'm getting towards the end of our time, um, slightly overrun as usual. Um, we can do all this as well in Excel. So those forms of data you've seen me access on the web, <clears throat> I can also access through SmartView, which is our Excel interface. So if you see, I've opened our demand data planning one. So I'm looking at demand planning. I can do the same drop down lists, change the drivers, change my demand rates, but through an Excel interface. So I can also do reporting through here. I can slice and dice the data. 
to produce reports or I can do those on dashboards. So we've got two different interfaces. We've got the main web interface and our smart view interface. As you see, it shows me exactly the same data. This data in Excel is live from the system. It's constantly communicating with the server and pulling the data down. Once you've changed data, you can then submit that data back up to the server and that saves that data back to the server. So hopefully that was a run through of the strategic workforce planning tool for you so you've learned some more about it today. Um, if anyone's got any questions please let us know. We'll just unmute everyone in a second. If you want some more information after the meeting please feel free to get in contact with us. Um, we're going to send an email around to everyone on the meeting with our contact details so you can get in contact with us to ask any questions you've got about a product if you'd like a further demo more configured towards your organization obviously this is quite a generic organization we've used to do this um, but we can do it something a bit more familiar to you using your data if you want to so please let us know so we'll just unmute everyone now and I'll uh, just look and say questions in the chat. So I've just unmuted everyone, so you should be able to click the microphone icon and unmute yourself. Because I've clicked the unmute now, you will be able to click that and ask any questions. I'll just look if we've got anything in the chat. Um, so we have got some questions in the chat, which is always good. So Kieran was asking, is the mod, it's a module cloud based and if Oracle isn't the HR system or any limitations to functionality, the module is cloud based. It doesn't require any infrastructure from your side. So that's good news. I know for a lot of people because you don't have to get the IT department involved as much. It's all cloud based. It's all hosted securely. I know there's some UK government people on this call. There is a UK government cage where Oracle locked the data away and it's all passed all the UK government security testing. So it is UK government approved to put your data in. Um, is there any limitations if your HR system isn't Oracle? No, we can integrate with any HR system out there as long as your HR system has the data in it. So if you can get your data out in a flat file to us, we can load it into the system. And we've got another question. So skills-based information, it's, where does it come from? Um, skills-based information would typically come from a HR or talent system. Some people might not have that data in their HR system because it doesn't have that sort of module in it. If you don't, you might have it recorded on spreadsheets in your organization in the learning management system. Again, if we could get a flat file out of that system, we could integrate it into our system. Is it role-based or individual-based? My example is individual-based, but you can set this up role-based. So you might say, I've got three HR analysts, but I don't but have their names in the system. I just do it by role. I have 10 HR analysts. I have 10 receptionists. I have... 15 directors, but we don't go to a named basis. Some people just want to do it on a roll because they've got a position based organization and want to do it like that. With the police, we're doing a bit of a combination of role based and position and people based, individual based, because they need to make sure all their roles are filled, but they also want to go to an individual level. Um, Toby asked. Is the integration with HCM strong? Can we pull in actual attrition rates and HCM competencies? Yes, we can pull in your actual attrition rates. If you pull in your actual attrition rates, that's really good because we've also got a feature we call predictive planning, which will look at your history for attrition and then run a prediction based on it and say, in the future, I predict you're going to have X percentage of attrition. So we can use that actual information to predict the future. Um, HCM competencies, yes, HCM competencies can all be imported. That's what we're doing with the police. Um, the 
import from Oracle HCM is pre-built from um, Oracle HCM to Strategic Workforce Plan. That's out of the box. We just tell it where your HCM system is, give it a username and password, it goes away. Integration with other non-Oracle systems is a couple more steps, but it's still quite simple. But obviously, the Oracle integration is very, very tight. Um, has anyone got any more questions? Because I've answered the ones that were in chat. Uh, so, any more questions, anyone? If not, um, we shall close the presentation. I'll just give it a minute or so for anyone to ask any questions. If you don't want to ask a question on the meeting, because we all know what online meetings are like, people don't like to ask questions as much. It's obviously a lot easier when you're face to face, but we can't do that at the moment. Um, please email us back after the meeting. We will be sending an email around with my contact details on, contact from our sales director, Matt, who, if you want to speak to him, if you want to speak to someone who knows about a product, speak to me. <laughs> but yeah, we can both provide you any information you need. Like I said, if you want to do a separate call with us, if you want us to build a custom demo for you to show how it would work in your organization, we're happy to do that. And we can have a conversation about that. Um, we're also happy to come and see you when we're allowed to. But if not, we'll have a meeting online with you. Um, so um, John's asked, will you be forwarding a copy of a presentation? Yeah, we'll send a presentation round when we send that email to everyone. If no one else has any questions, I will close the meeting for today. Thank you all for attending. I hope you all found it useful. And if there's no more questions, we'll close the meeting. Thanks everyone for attending. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you.